While Austin Burt Clothiers is shutting its doors, this isn't necessarily the end for Smith. Police say after the crash, the suspect got out of his car and fled on foot as police chased him through a cornfield. Abuzia tells me multiple Syrian families are living in Iowa City and Cedar Rapids right now. He himself has been here for 23 years, and he thinks this sudden dislike for refugees in America stems from fear. And this unusually warm December weather passing through Iowa is saving people in the area an additional few bucks. While there's always those excited Black Friday shoppers, some people in Cedar Rapids don't think it's necessary to rush out to the Lindale Mall just to get deals that may be there the next day. Kinnick Stadium may be closing its doors for football this season, but according to some people in Iowa City, that shouldn't make Hawkeye fans any less excited for the remaining games. Gas prices in many parts of eastern Iowa hit new lows. Drivers can fill up for less than $2 per gallon at most stations. Well, it's about time they got lower and delighted for everyone, especially at holiday time. Iowans are most excited the price dip is happening right before the holidays. Some plan to use the money they're saving for shopping and travel. And this unusually warm December weather passing through Iowa is saving people in the area an additional few bucks. It's just strange that it's middle of December and it's, it's almost uh, not t-shirt weather, but uh, real comfortable. Recent temperatures in the 50s and 60s are causing people in eastern Iowa to turn their heat down, meaning they save more money. Locals have also been walking and biking to their destinations thanks to the mild weather, therefore using less gas. Some people say these savings are the best gift they could have gotten during the holiday season. It's always good to save money and the holidays are a particularly good time. And uh, I'm glad the prices are down. With only two weeks left for Christmas, it'll be nice to be able to do some shopping and, and not, not worry about extra gas bills. We've got you covered in Iowa City. Hillary Maglin, KWWL News. After three fires in this Cedar Rapids home since October, neighbors suspect they may not be accidents. Flames ripped through this house for the third time in just the past two months. You can see black soot all around window frames from multiple fires. The garage roof collapsed, cars abandoned inside, and burnt debris scattered throughout the yard. Police, neighbors, and even the homeowners believe all three devastating fires were set on purpose. The house itself is no stranger to police and firefighters either. Police say they're regularly called out to the house for various problems. Homeowner Virginia Chavez says despite the reputation her house has gotten in the neighborhood, it's still her dream home. I wanted to live here the rest of my life until somebody started having fun with it. Chavez knows that neighbors are tired of it all, and Chavez herself hasn't actually lived in the house in over a year. Police and neighbors say this has been a nuisance property for the past few years, and the family says they know why they've gotten the reputation. Chavez admits the fact that her home has fallen apart over the years, along with letting multiple family members stay there, may have neighbors upset. She says she's been trying to raise money for repairs since the flood of 08, which destroyed her porch. She also insists all she wants to do was salvage the house. I don't understand. I don't understand why somebody would want to burn this house up. I really don't. And that bothers me. Police say just this morning after the fire, Chavez signed papers to have the house demolished. We've got you covered in Cedar Rapids. Hillary Maglin, KWWL News. Obviously, it bring, like, comes up in conversation because it is the same name as a terrorist group, which is, I mean, it's not a good thing to have. The University of Iowa has been facing controversy lately over the name of one of their web programs. The website, which students regularly use to check their school email and schedule classes, is often referred to as ISIS, an abbreviation of Iowa Student Information System. Many students don't think the name is an issue. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's a, just a coincidence that our acronym ended up the same as theirs. Some students even find it humorous. My classmates uh, tend to think of it as really hilarious um, between the differences. While many students say the website name doesn't offend them, they can understand why the university would want to make the change. I feel like it's just an abbreviation that people can maybe stray away from and just call it by its normal name. And many students say they have seen and heard the program referred to as Iowa Student Information System lately. 
The school says they are in the process of compiling cost estimates to change the program's name and will make their decision whether to keep the current name or change it. And most students feel indifferent about it. There rumors going on that they were going to change the name, but I don't know if that's actually going to happen or not, and it doesn't offend me at all. We've got you covered in Iowa City. Hillary Maglin, KWWL News. The University of Iowa attempted to shatter the record for highest attended college wrestling match with grapple on the gridiron at Kinnick Stadium. And fans were ecstatic for the first time event against number one ranked Oklahoma State. Big wrestling fan from Iowa, I think you have to be. Part of history. It just feels like great to be part of history. Some fans got to the stadium hours before grapple on the gridiron even started to tailgate and take part in pre-match activities. A lot of fans said one thing that had them really excited to be here today was the beautiful fall weather. This is epic, so you want to be a part of this, you want to be outside and the weather couldn't be better for us. This is perfect weather for Iowa in November. This might be the warmest day of all November. Around 45,000 fans showed up for the event and over 70,000 more are expected for tonight's Hawkeye football game against Minnesota. Between the two big events, fans had just one thing to say. Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! We've got you covered in Iowa City. Hillary Maglin, KWWL News. Emily Jacobs, the Iowa State freshman remembered in her hometown of Urbana as the girl with a kind heart. You knew Emily. Emily was a, a presence in her hallways, uh, very nice to talk with, but uh, um, she'll be missed. She'll be missed not only by her high school principal, but she was well liked by her peers and teachers as well. This is Center Point Urbana High School where Emily graduated from last spring. Staff members say it's been a difficult week. The school is even holding Jacob's funeral. Back in Ames, police are still searching for who hit the freshman. We can't necessarily speculate of who was at fault um, that morning, but we want them to do the right thing and come forward. Ames police now worry the case could go cold as the person who hit her and witnesses may be leaving campus for the holidays. Could be potential witnesses that saw something that morning, but they may be a student. And so they're leaving town this week after they take their tests and they may be going back to their community. So we're trying to get the word out. And Jacob's principal agrees. Whoever did this needs to come forward. I wish this person would step up and be accountable for himself and, and do the right thing. Um, not only for himself or herself, but for the family. We've got you covered in Urbana. Hillary Maglin, KWWL News.